You could literally be booking a flight right now from New York to London in under three hours. But you can't, because politicians screwed us over 50 years ago. This is the Boeing 2707 SST story, the most badass airplane ever designed that you'll never experience. Picture this mess. It's 1963 and America is having a national ego crisis. The friend who can't stand it when anyone else is better at anything. They're literally racing Russians to the moon, which is completely insane when you think about it. They're building planet-destroying bombs because apparently that's how adults solve problems. Then something happens that sends Washington into full panic mode. May 1963. Juan Tripp, running Pan Am, drops a bombshell. He wants supersonic jets, but here's the kicker. He'll buy them from Europe if necessary. Can you imagine? America's premier airline is basically saying, yeah, we'll buy French planes. President Kennedy must have been ready to launch him into space. So on June 5th, 1963, Kennedy stood up in the US Air Force Academy and declared war on European aviation. He announced America would build a supersonic transport superior to any other. The Soviets had this terrifying Tu-144 that looked like something from a sci-fi nightmare. The British and French were building Concorde together. This made American engineers want to throw things. America couldn't just sit there like doing nothing, watching everyone else build supersonic jets while they're flying around in what suddenly seemed like Ford Model Ts with wings. When you stepped onto any airplane anywhere, other passengers would think, damn, I wish my country could build that. And you know what? You could have grabbed breakfast in New York, flown to London for an afternoon meeting, and still made it home for dinner with your family. In the same day. Most supersonic jets have fixed triangular wings that never move. You've seen them. Paper aeroplanes made of metal and jet engines. Boeing's engineers looked at that and basically said, that's boring. Hold our beer and watch this. These absolute madmen designed wings that moved while you sat inside, probably gripping your armrests, wondering if this was normal. Wings that swung forward for takeoff, then swept back for supersonic flight. Picture yourself sipping pre-flight coffee when suddenly you realize your airplane's wings are moving, not vibrating, actually changing shape, like riding inside a transformer that decided to become an aeroplane. The design looked like the future B1, but with four engines in separate pods. Boeing's engineers were solving an impossible puzzle. How do you make wings strong enough for supersonic flight, yet move like they're alive? Buckle up for statistics that'll make your flights seem like covered wagon travel. The Boeing 2707 SST carried 250 to 300 passengers, depending on the version. You'd have triple the company on your supersonic adventure. It would have cruised at Mach 2.7, almost 1,800 miles per hour, slicing through the sky. Your current flight does 550 miles per hour, which seems so pathetically slow. It makes you want to get out and push. The range? Over 4,000 miles, without stopping. Los Angeles, straight to Tokyo. New York, to anywhere in Europe, could have been like hopping to the next state. Weekend Paris trips would have been as normal as Vegas trips today. The entire concept of distance would have been different. We could have lived in a world where popping over to London for lunch was something people said with straight faces. Imagine this. You'd walk up to this massive aircraft that escaped from Star Wars. Every other plane would look like chunky, outdated relics. It would have been drop-dead gorgeous in a way that makes you stop and stare like an idiot, pulling out your camera for pictures from 17 angles. Inside, you'd know you were about to experience something 99.99% of humans throughout history could never imagine. The cabin felt spacious because Boeing wasn't just competing with airlines, they were going head-to-head -head with luxury ocean liners. 
During takeoff, you'd press your face against the window like a kid, watching those enormous wings swing forward. The acceleration would be less like a commercial flight, more like being strapped to a rocket with seats. Then, climbing toward cruising altitude, you'd watch those wings sweep back into supersonic configuration. You'd feel the exact moment your aircraft broke the sound barrier. You'd be inside the machine, creating sonic booms for people below to hear. For hours, you'd travel at three times the speed of sound. Coffee service over the Atlantic. Finish one magazine, start descending toward another continent. It would have ruined regular flying forever. Here's where this beautiful dream face-planted into a brick wall of physics and 1960s technology limitations. Building supersonic airliners isn't just making fighter jets bigger. Those cool moving wings? Absolute engineering nightmare that gave Boeing's engineers stress ulcers, insomnia, and trust issues with physics. The brutal reality is that the wings needed to be strong enough to handle forces that would tear apart most aircraft, yet remain lightweight. Every mechanism moving those wings needed absolute perfection every time. At Mach 2.7, with 300 people trusting you with their lives, there's no, oops, that wasn't supposed to happen. The weight problem alone drove engineers to drink. The wing mechanism added thousands of pounds, akin to running a marathon while carrying your entire kitchen, living room, and possibly your car. Boeing's engineers were stuck where fixing one problem created three worse ones. Engineering hell and everyone knew they were fighting a losing battle against the universe. By 1967, this program consumed over $700 million in government funding, roughly $6 billion today. And the plane never flew once, not even five minutes. Every dollar went into endless research, development, and building increasingly complex prototypes that got heavier and more expensive. Original estimates were optimistic fantasies. Boeing thought they could develop everything for $1 billion total. Airlines were initially excited. Pan Am ordered 15, TWA wanted six. By late 1969, Boeing had 122 orders from 26 airlines worldwide. But as costs climbed into the stratosphere and delivery dates slipped, airlines got cold feet. They cancelled orders, like passengers abandoning a sinking ship. If you'd planned trips around supersonic routes, you'd have watched vacation options disappear in real time. By 1970, something unexpected happened. People suddenly cared about the environment. The first Earth Day was huge. Suddenly, a plane guzzling fuel like a drunk sailor and creating explosive booms everywhere didn't seem appealing. Plus, they were neck deep in Vietnam. Tax dollars were stretched thin. People asked pointed questions. Do we need billions for supersonic jets for rich people when we've got real problems? Imagine working two jobs only to discover that your taxes are funding faster travel for people who already fly anywhere. You'd be mad too. By 1971, over 85% of Americans opposed the SST program. Barely half had ever flown in any airplane. These aircraft wouldn't just create sonic booms, they'd be incredibly loud during normal takeoffs and landings. Living near airports? Life changed forever. Picture the loudest plane you've heard. Now imagine something significantly louder happening multiple times daily over your neighborhood. Morning coffee interrupted by the engines audible from five miles. Phone conversations impossible. You run outside thinking there's been an explosion, heart racing, ears ringing, only to see a Boeing 2707 disappearing, leaving confused neighbors, barking dogs, and fading echoes. Now imagine that 15 times daily. Aircraft followed commercial routes above your head, your peaceful life is interrupted by endless, explosive events you can't escape. Forget sleeping on weekends. Forget quiet phone calls. Environmental groups warned each flight would create a bang zone 50 miles wide and 2,000 miles long. 
Scientists freaked out about what hundreds might do to the ozone layer. These planes would fly higher than any commercial aircraft, pumping exhaust into the stratosphere where our protective ozone layer hangs out. Nobody knew what hundreds of daily flights would do. This wasn't abstract. It was about whether walking outside could cause skin cancer. By October 1968, Boeing's engineers faced soul-crushing truths about their revolutionary wings. It wasn't working. The titanium wing pivot weighed 4,600 pounds alone, measuring 11 feet long by 2.5 feet thick. Way too heavy, complex, and expensive. So Boeing did something heartbreaking. They killed the moving wings entirely. Imagine spending years designing the coolest airplane feature ever. Now imagine throwing it away because physics won't cooperate. The new Boeing 2707 SST had fixed wings, similar to those of Concorde. It couldn't carry as many passengers, down from 300 to 234, couldn't fly as far. It wasn't really better than what Europeans were building. Work began in September 1969, two years behind schedule, but the dream was dying. March 24, 1971. The US Senate voted to kill the entire program. The vote was close, 51 to 46, but enough to crush dreams forever. The House confirmed this devastating decision on May 20th, 1971. Representatives literally shouted at each other. Gerald Ford made a desperate argument about protecting thousands of jobs. Sidney Yates led the opposition, winning 215 to 204. After eight years and nearly one billion dollars, America's supersonic dream was dead. Boeing was ordered to stop immediately. Thousands lost jobs overnight. Years of research became worthless. At cancellation, 115 unfilled orders from 25 airlines. Concorde had 74 orders from 16 customers, getting the supersonic future that America abandoned. The effects were devastating. Boeing cut 60,000 employees. A Seattle billboard read, Will the last person leaving Seattle turn out the lights? What if Boeing solved the problems? What if Congress kept funding? By the 1980s, dozens of supersonic routes might have crisscrossed the globe. You could have lived in New York, worked in London, and commuted by supersonic jet twice a week. Weekend trips to Europe could have been as common as trips to Vegas. But maybe we dodged a bullet. After all, supersonic flight is fuel intensive. That means the environmental impact would have been enormous. Noise unbearable. And it would have remained expensive, creating bigger gaps between wealthy and regular travelers. The 2707 wasn't a total failure. Research led to advances that have improved every aircraft since. Engineers who worked on the 2707 designed the 747, 757, and 767. Concorde flew for 27 years, which they've proven that supersonic flight was possible, but expensive, noisy, and unsustainable. Only 14 were built commercially. They were never profitable and retired in 2003. The Soviet Tu-144 was worse. Only 55 passenger flights before it was grounded. Maybe America made the smartest call. New companies are trying to bring back supersonic flight. You might experience it in your lifetime. Boom Technology is developing new aircraft, learning from past mistakes. Modern designs are quieter and environmentally friendly. The sonic boom problem might finally be solvable with technologies 1960s engineers never imagined. You might get your chance to fly faster than the speed of sound just not on the plane America originally planned. Perhaps the supersonic dream was delayed by 50 years as engineers worked out the kinks. This story highlights how something still goes wrong with every new technology. How do you balance crazy dreams with reality? Physics, money, politics, public opinion, 
We're wrestling with these questions in electric cars, space travel, and AI. Lessons from this disaster are as relevant today as during Nixon's presidency. Boeing learned that being first doesn't guarantee success. Sometimes it's smarter to let others solve impossible problems first, then make them better. Why didn't you fly the American Concorde? Because sometimes ambitious dreams teach valuable lessons. Possible. The month of July taught America about technology limits, environmental responsibility, and realistic planning. Those lessons helped Boeing become successful and shaped aviation standards protecting you today. The program carried something more critical than passengers, endless human desire to push boundaries and reach for the impossible. Even when we fall short, that desire keeps us moving toward innovations that might transform how you travel, work, and live. Think how different your travel might have been. Remember that valuable lessons come from dreams we don't achieve. At least, not when we first try. Your supersonic future was delayed, not cancelled forever. Maybe in 10 years, you'll book that three-hour London flight we should have had 50 years ago. So what do you think? Are you frustrated that we never flew this incredible machine? Should America have pushed through the problems? Would you book a supersonic flight today? If you enjoyed this story about the aeroplane that never was, hit subscribe.